Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be doing a quick discussion on how to customize your calendars in Apex 5. I called this uh, talk uh, Calendars with Style in Apex 5 uh, because we're going to be focusing on uh, how you can change what your calendar looks like. Uh, not necessarily um, functionality, uh, but kind of just trying to give visual cues to your users uh, to help steer how they use your calendar. This is using the new calendar region in Apex 5. We're going to be kind of covering the core components of what you need before you create a calendar. Uh, we're going to be talking about how you can adjust the styles of an event. And to clarify, um, an event is going to be basically an entry in our calendar. So anywhere uh, where you see something kind of pop up in our calendar, we're calling that an event. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to style the days of your calendar. Uh, so in other words, the actual Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, those boxes on your calendar. First, we're going to talk about the core components of a calendar. And really, there are not a lot of requirements here. You need to have a display value and a date value. So the display is going to be what to display. And the date value is going to be where to display it. So for instance, uh, if you had a date value of January 1st, 2016, um, that is where uh, that event is going to display. And if it was displaying uh, an event called party, uh, well, then it would display party uh, on January 1st, 2016. Another optional component, uh, but something that provides an immense amount of use for a calendar, um, are links. Uh, you can have an edit link and a create link. And uh, they're both very powerful. Uh, the edit link is going to allow you to click on an event. So this is where you're going to go or what's going to happen when a particular event is clicked on. And there's also a create link. So this is what's going to happen uh, when you click on um, an empty day. Uh, so if January 1st, 2016 doesn't have anything on it uh, and you click on that day of the calendar, the create link will fire. Uh, but if there is an event on that day and you instead click on that, on that uh, event, then the edit link will fire. So let's go ahead and let's set up a calendar. Um, I have an existing page that we're going to go ahead and use. And uh, we're going to create a calendar region and I'm just going to put an edit link on it so you can see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and we're going to edit my page. And remember that a, a calendar is actually a region. And so we're going to come down to this bottom tray and we're going to find regions. And notice that there's actually uh, two different calendar options. Uh, we have the calendar and then we also have the legacy calendar over here. So legacy calendar that's there just for a legacy support um, but that's not what we're going to be talking about today. So let's go ahead and let's add a calendar to the content body of my page. And as with any region uh, in Apex 5, anything that you add gets the name of new. Uh, we're going to be dealing with events. So let's go ahead and let's change this uh, to events. Now here's the tricky part. or not, It's not really that tricky, but um, there are some requirements here for the query that we provide. Um, the query uh, needs to provide at least um, a display value and a date. So it, need, it wants to know what to display and where to display it. On which day of the calendar are we going to display this? Um, if you want to do any sort of editing in the future, you probably also want to have some sort of primary key, but we're not going to worry about that too much. So what we're going to do uh, is we're actually going to work on this table here called My Events. And uh, you can see that it meets the, the necessary criteria. Uh, you can see that we have an event start and it's a date. And then we're going to use the event name uh, as the display. So we're actually going to select uh, everything uh, from this particular table. Let's go ahead and do our little pop-up and type that in. All right. And you can see I put a little comment here for event name is what we're going to use for display. And event start is the date that we're going to use to control where our event displays. Uh, notice that it's still barking at us. Uh, we can uh, we see that there's still some messages here and some things we need to configure. Well, 
just because we have a display value and a date value doesn't mean that our calendar object is configured or knows which ones to use. Because we also have an end date. Uh, so Apex doesn't know, well, do you want to use event start or do you want to use event end? And all of these fields could potentially be used uh, for the display value. So it's definitely uh, at a loss uh, when it comes to that. So let's go ahead and configure those properties. We're going to click on the attributes node of the event region of the calendar region. And we're going to adjust the display column. And we're going to go ahead and pick event name. And then we're going to go ahead and set the start date column, which is event start. Notice that uh, end date is optional. Uh, we're not going to use, we are not going to use end date uh, for this uh, discussion. Uh, just know that that is possible. You, a, an event can have a duration. It could span multiple days potentially, but we're not going to do that. Let's go ahead and save and run the page. And quite simply, or, uh, we get uh, our calendar created. Notice that when I click on anything, uh, so I'm, I'm clicking on the event, nothing's happening. I'm click, clicking on the day, nothing's happening. Uh, how could we potentially add um, one of those optional attributes I talked about before, uh, say uh, an edit link. Well, I've already created a, a form page uh, for an event. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just link to that form page. So let's go ahead and edit page 10. I'm going to navigate down to where I see the view edit link. And I'm going to go ahead, and I already have um, a link defined, uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And so now when I open this up, you should see that we're going to page 11. We're setting the primary key of that item, uh, of the, we're setting the primary key item to the primary key of the particular event. And we're going to make sure that we clear cache on that page. Okay, save, and run. So now what's going to happen is when I click edit, when I click on uh, an event, it's going to bring up um, a, an edit screen. And I, and I could change this. Um, I'm not going to, but I could. All right, so that just about covers the core components uh, to getting a calendar up and running. But what if we want to actually start styling this calendar so it looks, uh, so we customize it a bit to suit our needs? Well, we're gonna go ahead and style our events. So Apex 5 uh, does an excellent job at kind of um, helping the developer uh, control their styles uh, using CSS uh, classes. And the reason for that, it, it's actually, it's really good that Apex does this. Um, and it, it helps us consolidate some of our UI logic um, into different uh, CSS classes. Uh, it helps promote reusability. Um, and honestly, it's just kind of easier to maintain. Um, if you have a lot of inline styles where you're actually finding elements and um, applying different styles to them, uh, that can be a pain to kind of manage and work with. Uh, sometimes it's necessary, but um, uh, you, that's kind of, uh, you want to avoid going straight to that. In, in our case, there's actually a, a CSS class property that we're going to leverage. Um, and there are actually many predefined classes that you can use, um, but you can always create your own class uh, if um, you have a specific color or a specific requirement that needs to be met. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a case statement to adjust the CSS class for a given record. So let's go ahead and take a look and show you what I mean. So the goal here is that we're going to adjust um, these different events so that they look different or they have a different color. And why do I care if they have a different color? Well, uh, these are gonna be, these are actually different event types. So uh, Joe's birthday, that's a birthday event. 
uh, discuss important issues. That's a meeting event. Um, and Skill Builders Day is a holiday that I just created. So we want these to be different colors. Let's go ahead and edit our page. And here's one thing I just want to point out. If you're new to Apex 5 um, and you're wondering where all the help text went, um, the easiest way to figure out how to customize or use something um, is uh, usually if you click on one of these properties over here on the right hand side, like for instance, I'm going to go find our CSS class property. So I selected the attributes of our calendar region. I found CSS class. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Notice that it turned blue, but nothing else really changed. Um, well, actually, if I click on this help tag up here, you can see that's going to list out lots of very useful help information. One of which is the how to leverage a case statement to adjust the CSS class for a given um, record. And so what we're going to do is we're going to modify our query so that we have some sort of column to leverage for this CSS class property. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find our source query. And we're going to modify it. Okay. And so what we're going to say is, um, I, I believe this is birthday. So if, if it's a birthday, we want you to be, use Apex Cal Green. If it's a meeting, we want it to be yellow. And then uh, if it's Skill Builders Day, oh, we want this to be blue. And then if you don't fit any of these, the default color is then going to be black. Okay. Save and run. Now you'll notice that nothing happened. Just because we have that, have that class or that column defined doesn't mean that Apex is going to use it. We need to make sure that we configure our property. To do that, uh, we're gonna navigate uh, to the attributes. And we can see that there is CSS class. So it's actually talking about the CSS class of a given event. And very conveniently, we have the CSS class column that we just defined. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save and run. And there we have it. Uh, we've adjusted the colors so that whenever we have um, a birthday, it will display green, a meeting will display yellow, and a holiday will display in blue. Now, what if we want to create our own color? Right, so what if Skill Builders Day, we don't want that blue, we want kind of a darker blue. Well, um, what we need to do is we need to add a CSS class uh, to our page. And so one thing that I wanna point out is if I right click and I inspect element, you can see right here, we have Apex Cal Blue that's that color that was added, um, or that's the result of the column that we added uh, and the properties that we configured on our calendar. And we can also see over here on the right-hand side, um, we can see, oh, the this is how this particular class is styled. So what we can do is um, we, if we provide a name, uh, instead of using Apex Cal Blue, but we kind of make up our own name, and we kind of use a different background color, border color, and a text color, we can very easily make up our own class. So what I'm going to do is I have something already copied here. Good. I'm going to go ahead and edit my page. I'm going to navigate to my page attributes, and I'm going to locate my CSS my inline CSS classes here, or inline CSS property. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste this in. So you can see um, I did some different, uh, some different selectors have been added to the front of this, uh, but ultimately I made a class called SB Blue. And I picked a blue color 
I, I picked some different um, some different colors here uh, to use. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this name SB Blue. Okay. And I'm going to head on over to my query for my calendar. And instead of using Apex Cal Blue. I'm going to go ahead and use SB blue because that's what I just created. Say OK. And so just to refresh your memory, this is what it looks like currently. Let's go ahead and save and run. And now you can see I kind of have this like almost kind of purpley blue color. So it is possible to create your own colors when trying to style uh, it is possible to create your own colors uh, when trying to uh, style events. The next thing that we're going to talk about is what if you want to actually style the different days of your calendar? So uh, days that have already passed, maybe you want them to be grayed out. Uh, maybe future days you want them to be green, right? Maybe you have uh, some days that you would like to modify. So it is possible uh, to kind of add some uh, modifications. So previously we talked about styling events. Now we're going to take a second and talk about how you can style the different days of your calendar. So one thing that's really cool about this new calendar region is that each day, each element on the page that represents a day um, has a different set of CSS classes uh, that describe it. And so what do, I, what do I mean by that? Well, if you were to inspect the element on any given day in a calendar, it's going to have some uh, of these particular classes that have been listed out here on below. Um, all of them um, are going to be defined as a day, but some are going to be defined as Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Some are going to be defined as actually in a different month. So if you're currently looking at January, um, if a December date happens to display or a February date happens to display, it's going to be flagged as another month. And then lastly, uh, there's kind of in reference to the current day, uh, if it's not the current day, it's going to have FC past. Uh, if it is the current day, it's going to be marked as today. And if it's sometime in the future, it's going to be marked as FC future. Well, this is great because you can very clearly indicate uh, or display whether or not something is in the past or the future uh, as necessary. So let's go ahead and let's take a look uh, and see how we can add style to indicate uh, if something is in the past or if something's in the future and or uh, kind of control uh, if something is in a different month. Okay, so this white color is uh, nice. Uh, it's, you know, it's very clean, uh, but sometimes uh, you, want to, you want to add uh, styles uh, or, or you want to color code uh, your calendar uh, to provide to provide some sort of uh, significant meaning. So let's do that. So what I have here, okay, right here, um, let me make this bigger, there we go, um, is you can see that uh, I'm targeting uh, the FC past so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say anything in the past, um, I want to be kind of this red color. I'm going to go ahead and find anything that's in the future, I kind of want to, I want to give it this green color. Finally, I'm going to say anything that's today, uh, and I want to go ahead uh, and highlight it uh, to this yellow color. And I'm going to talk about why um, this last line's here in just a second. So let me go ahead and copy these first uh, three styles. 
Let's go ahead and take them into our application. So again, I'm going to go find the inline style section of my page. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and paste this. So I'm saying if it's the past, um, I, I believe it was red, the future is green, and I'm just changing the color of what's highlighted, uh, what today is, to be kind of a, um, a yellowish kind of mustard color. Save and wrap. Okay, so you can see the past is red, uh, today is yellow, and uh, the future is green. Now, I also just want to point out that um, we have the next month here, which is February, and we have the previous month here, which is December. So I think it's important to illustrate that those are that those are uh, actually different months. And the easiest way to do that is to use that other date class. So one thing that I want to point out is the order here is very important. So if I go ahead and let me find that style from earlier. And I say other month inherit. And I come back here to my styles and I, and I put it up here at the top. Say OK. Save. Run. Notice that nothing changed. Now, here, here's a very quick example of why that didn't actually do anything. So whenever you're working with CSS, I want you to think about uh, painting, I wanted you to think of a painter trying to paint something on a palette. So if I'm a painter and I have kind of this this paintbrush here and I'm painting with, uh, let's do orange, and I'm painting with orange, right? So that's the first color. So sequentially, first I painted with orange. Now, if I then come along and say, well, I want part of this to be pink, or let's actually let's do green. I had to I had to apply that green second. So if I did that in the other order, uh, if I did green first and then orange, um, you would have never you would never be able to see the green because the uh, the orange would kind of cover it up. So that's kind of what we just that's what we just implemented. First, um, we found we kind of found the other months and applied a color a color to it. And then we overwrote that um, because uh, those days are that have the other month class also have the past and future. So because we want the other month style to win out or to overwrite the past and future style, we need to make sure that we apply that class second or after. So this change is actually as easy as selecting the other month and then painting on uh, the color of the other month. And so this background color, we're just saying inherit, which means we don't want to actually provide a color. We want you just to use the color um, of the parent element. And you'll see now that other month is kind of, uh, these other months now no, no longer uh, are red or green, respectively. So we talked a little bit about um, how CSS classes can provide a great amount of control over calendar regions. And um, there are many different types of classes that you can use uh, to kind of color coordinate different parts uh, of your calendar, uh, ranging from days of the week to more general things as if something is in the past or something is in the future. And always remember that it is possible to create any custom CSS styles as needed. So uh, good luck and happy calendaring, and I hope you enjoy the new calendar in Apex 5.